Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Hasten Lam, and along with my team, Rai Rondola and Sarai Sharshar, we are excited to introduce UBC Client Adaptation in partnership with UBC Campus and Community Planning. Temperatures in Metro Vancouver are warming. By 2050, our region will face twice as many days with temperatures above 25 degrees Celsius. There will also be increased frequency and severity of heat waves, resulting in heightened health risks for vulnerable populations such as the elderly and children. On the other hand, our region is also expected to experience an increase of up to 12% precipitation during the fall, winter, and spring months. Furthermore, the intensity of extreme rain events will increase by 36%, prompting a greater risk of flooding. We'll be referring to this Venn diagram to better understand climate adaptation. Climate action is typically divided into two categories. First, mitigation. This is the prevention of climate change. Second, adaptation. This is responding to the impacts of climate change. Our project focuses on climate adaptation as there are already expected climate impacts from 2050 climate projections. As such, our project seeks to inform UBC's future climate change plans and increase UBC's climate adaptability by providing evidence-based strategy recommendations. To inform and guide our project, a total of nine interviews were conducted with campus staff and faculty. Through these semi-structured interviews, we were able to identify campus-specific climate risks and vulnerabilities. Our interviews revealed the high heat encompassing heat waves, droughts, and wildfires, as well as high precipitation encompassing flooding, major storm events, and coastal erosion were prominent risks and vulnerabilities faced. Additionally, there was a common theme of increased green infrastructure. One informant was quoted saying, the more green on campus, the better. Based on our expert interviews, our project uses a green infrastructure approach to enhance UBC's climate adaptability. Consequently, our green infrastructure strategies aim to achieve the following outcomes. Firstly, reduced heat island effect. Secondly, increased ecosystem services and biodiversity. Thirdly, provision of stormwater management services. Fourthly, enhanced social functions, amenity space, and aesthetic value. Keeping these strategy outcomes in mind, our project has identified five high heat strategies as shown in this cross section. This includes increased vegetation, cool surfaces, social activation, shade canopy, and green roofs and walls. Each high heat strategy achieves one or more of the strategy outcomes within the context of UBC's climate adaptation. This next cross section shows seven high precipitation strategies. This includes engineered wetlands, tree trenches, rain gardens, permeable pavements, rainwater harvesting, downspout planters, and bioswales. Similarly, each of these high precipitation strategies achieve one or more of the strategy outcomes within the context of UBC's climate adaptation. As a campus site study, our project will be using Urban K Barber, or IKB for short, which is the red square on the map of UBC as shown. IKB is a library with a very central location on campus. There is high pedestrian traffic around the site and large number of users in IKB as well. In our interviews, it was also mentioned that this site had the most potential for implementation of these climate adaptation strategies. Looking more closely at the site, the west side of IKB, shown in orange on the map, experiences high heat risks. Firstly, there is a lack of shade canopy, which means much of the ground is exposed to the sun. Secondly, there are large windows along the west side of IKB that reflect the sun's rays onto the ground below, which is further worsened by the window southwest facing exposure. Here you see an example of increased vegetation as a strategy to address high heat. On the left, the current environment leaves the IKB windows completely unshaded. In our proposed strategy on the right, Adding additional trees or vegetation will partially block the sun's rays from IKB's windows while providing valuable ecosystem services. Moving on to high precipitation risks, flooding risks were identified on the east side of IKB as shown by the blue dotted area. Firstly, there are large impervious surfaces on the east side for the purposes of a widened walkway and road. Secondly, East Mall, which is directly adjacent to IKB, is a major channel for stormwater and severe rain events. In this next example, we look at the use of rain gardens as a strategy to address high precipitation. On the left, the current environment has lots of impervious surfaces with very little vegetation. Our proposed strategy on the right would be to reduce the amount of impervious surfaces through the implementation of a rain garden. The rain garden will provide stormwater management services by collecting and treating stormwater runoff. It is also more aesthetically pleasing as users walk through this high pedestrian traffic area. In summary, it is imperative for UBC to take steps to adapt to changing climate. Based on the Metro Vancouver climate projections for 2050, increased heat and precipitation are to be expected. As such, our project has identified green infrastructure as an approach to climate adaptation. Green infrastructure has the potential to address other outcomes such as increased ecosystem services and enhanced social functions with improved aesthetic value. Additionally, green infrastructure also provides an avenue for creative solutions to be integrated into the existing built environment. On behalf of the UBC Climate Adaptation Group, we thank you again for joining us today.